Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, greetings to whoever is watching this video. My name is Eleanor Phoenix and I create beauty content while incorporating political and social commentary. First of all, I want to say a big thank you because I just recently reached a thousand subscribers and that to me is pretty mind blowing because six months ago I had like, what, 64? Um, so yeah, this is just thank you, thank you. <laughs> First of all, I want to apologize for being so inactive on my YouTube channel lately. I've had a lot going on. I'm in the middle of a move, I'm preparing for my exams in May, June, and I'm finishing my applications for university, along with a couple of other things. But I hope that my returning subscribers are understanding and won't hold it against me. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe and let me know your thoughts on what I have to say down below. Today's subject is going to be on abortion and I will be discussing my view on the pro-life versus pro-choice debate. I consider myself to be a pretty open-minded person during political debates, but this is a topic and stance that I will never change my mind on. As someone with a uterus, this affects me personally, and I believe that pro-life is a misleading name to refer to someone who is against abortions. I think it makes more sense to call people anti-abortion and pro-reproductive rights because these terms are clearer and more inclusive, so those are the terms I will be using in this video. In reality, the anti-abortion side of the argument is a lot more harmful than the pro-reproductive rights side. I've seen anti-abortion activists celebrate Planned Parenthood buildings being shut up. I've seen them claim that rape and incest are not good enough reasons to seek an abortion. I've seen these people be extremely hateful and sexist. The worst I've seen on the pro-reproductive rights side are people celebrating their own abortions, which I also don't agree with, but ultimately this isn't harming anyone. It's just distasteful. If we're looking at the extremists on the pro-reproductive rights side, the worst I've seen are women trying to self-induce late-term abortions, which isn't something I believe to be ethically sound. The worst I've seen in terms of extremes on the anti-abortion side are mass shootings and serial killers who target people who have had an abortion or provide abortions. Some of the mass shootings have led to pregnant women who want their child to end up losing them. On one side of the abortion debate, we have women trying to end late-term pregnancies, and on the other, we have mass murderers and serial killers. This is part of the reason why I believe that pro-life is not an accurate description of people who are against abortions. All of this said, I do believe that the majority of people who are anti-abortion are doing what they think is right. With people trying to compare abortion with infanticide, it's very easy to get caught up into thinking that abortion is evil. But abortion has existed since pregnancy has existed. The only thing that has changed is that now abortion is a safe and relatively simple medical procedure. I am pro-reproductive rights, I always have been, and I always will be. I have an infinite amount of respect for mothers, for women, and for people who have gone through pregnancy and childbirth. And that is the very reason why I am pro-reproductive rights. Motherhood is a choice, and it is a choice that I do not plan to partake in. Personally, I do not ever want to experience pregnancy or childbirth, and it is my right to make that decision for myself. In the past, research on pregnancy has focused entirely on the fetus, and it wasn't until recently that scientists started looking at the effects of pregnancy on a woman's body. Before that, it didn't seem to matter what or how the female body changes during and after pregnancy. Women were dismissed and ignored. Until 1990, women weren't required to be included in clinical trials, and even today, there is a lack of sex-disaggregated data within research, and pregnant women are not allowed to be included in any scientific research, regardless of the effects that the research might or might not have on a fetus. The most common maternal health conditions or problems that a woman may experience during pregnancy include anemia, UTIs, mental health conditions, hypertension, diabetes, obesity and weight gain, and hyperemesis gravidarum. Other negative side effects of pregnancy, of which the majority of women will experience at least one and usually more during and or after pregnancy, include hemorrhoids, insomnia, perfect floor dysfunction and or prolapse, pre- and postpartum anxiety and or depression, cochidemia, carpal tunnel, pubic symphysis dysfunction, a dislocated pelvis, heartburn, acid reflux, indigestion, constipation, back problems, recurring yeast infections, bladder issues, heart failure, tooth decay, gum disease, and pregnancy tumours. This is not an extensive list, by the way. 
The most severe complications of pregnancy affect more than 50,000 women in the United States alone every year. Based on recent trends, this burden has been steadily increasing. The following fact alone should give you an obvious answer as to what side of the argument you should be on in abortion debates. The risk of death associated with childbirth is approximately 14 times higher than that with abortion. Similarly, the overall morbidity associated with childbirth exceeds that with abortion. I'll rephrase that for you. A woman is over 14 times more likely to die during childbirth than during or after a medically induced abortion. A woman's body, life, and choices are not less important than the body, life, or choices of a fetus. In fact, I'd say a woman's body, life, and choices are far more important than that of a fetus. A fetus cannot cure cancer. A fetus cannot explore space. A fetus cannot save anyone's life. A fetus cannot invent any useful new contraptions to help others. A fetus can't make you your cappuccino at 5am when you pull up to Starbucks before work. A fetus cannot lecture you on how you should be ironing your shirt. A fetus cannot create a beautiful painting or sculpture or compose a piece of music that speaks to your soul. A fetus cannot nurse a sick individual back to health. A fetus cannot pass laws that affect the lives of millions of human beings. A woman can. A fetus is entirely dependent on the body of another person. They cannot respire, grow, eat, defecate, or do any of the characteristics required for something to be considered a living being without inhabiting another body and stealing nutrients and resources directly from their body. In that regard, fetuses function more like parasites than human beings. And no, I'm not calling children or babies parasites. I'm saying that a fetus functions more like a parasite than a baby. I'm also not saying the fetuses aren't important or valuable, but they sure as hell aren't as important or as valuable as the women who are living and breathing right now. I often hear the same what-if argument during abortion debates. What if that fetus grew up to become the person who cures cancer? And I have two other what-ifs in response to that. What if that fetus grows up to become a war criminal or a serial killer? Or what if the woman who is pregnant is on the verge of a scientific breakthrough when she gets pregnant and the fetus implants itself into her fallopian tubes? Because of abortion laws, she isn't allowed to abort the fetus and this causes a hemorrhage. She dies. We might have to wait another 20, 50 or 100 years before someone else comes close to the same scientific breakthrough. However, dwelling on what ifs are not productive, nor do they help us come to a decision on what is ethically or morally right. Women deserve bodily autonomy and it has always been and always should be up to women who they breed with. Not every man deserves to be a father and in that same breath, not every woman deserves or is willing to be a mother. Women are usually a lot more self-aware about their capabilities and skills as parents than men are, which is part of the reason why in the vast majority of heterosexual households the woman is the primary caregiver. And it is a lot more common to see single mothers than single fathers. As someone who is pro-choice, I extend that same attitude towards men. Not every man wants to be a father and men should have the choice on whether or not to be involved in parenting. This means that if a man has made it clear to his partner that he does not want to be a father and despite this she gets pregnant and decides to keep the baby, he should be able to sign documents that prevent him from ever being involved in that child's life. This includes financial support and he waivers his right to ever be able to interact with that child. It is not morally right to force a man to be a father in the same way that it is not morally right to force a woman to be a mother. A common phrase that comes out of the mouths of anti-abortion activists is abortion is murder. If abortion is murder, then I guess male masturbation is genocide. And if a woman has a miscarriage, then she should be able to claim life insurance on the fetus. And if a fetus is a baby, then child support should start as soon as a pregnancy is confirmed. And I guess that would mean that assaulting a pregnant person also counts as child abuse. The vast majority of people would disagree with most, if not all, of those statements. Enough scientific data exists to show that banning legalized abortion not only doesn't prevent abortion, it makes the procedure imminently dangerous and puts the woman and her well-being at severe risk. We all remember the incident with the clothes hanger, right? Another important thing to point out is that fetuses do not feel pain before 22 weeks and 91% of abortions occur before 10 weeks. There was a video I watched where the fetus was reacting to its abortion and people were led to believe that this meant that the fetus was in pain. The truth is that this fetus was simply reacting to a stimulus. If someone poked you in the side, you would react by moving away as a reflex, not because it was painful. This is a very common reaction to stimuli. I think the most important and liberating part of being on the pro-reproductive right side of the argument is that you can still be anti-abortion for yourself while recognizing that not everybody shares your same views. 
You might never get an abortion yourself for whatever reason, but that doesn't mean you should force someone else to go through pregnancy and childbirth. Pregnancy is an extremely difficult and strenuous process, and there are very few women out there who actually enjoy it. The majority of women who have experienced pregnancy have not got very nice things to say about it. Partly because of the physical changes that their body experienced while pregnant, partly because of permanent changes that they have had since being pregnant, and partly because of the psychological changes. I don't think that the majority of anti-abortion activists are evil or want to control women like a lot of woke liberals and feminists on social media say. I think that a lot of them want to do the right thing and think that the anti-abortion side is the right side. But you cannot be anti-abortion and also claim to care about women. That's a juxtaposition. That's all I have to say on this topic today. I want to thank you all very much for watching. If you'd like to see more of me, then subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on all my social media handles. It's at Eleanor I Phoenix on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. I hope to see you all in my next video. Peace, love, and respect. Thank you.